Hi fellow crafters! I've already shared many videos showing you how to create beautiful card ideas using the Pierced Blooms dies. Well in today's video I'm going to show you how to use these dies to create a charming home decor piece. Would you like to see how? Hey everyone, I'm Terry from NutsAboutStamping.com. I love sharing project ideas and techniques for rubber stamping, paper crafting, and scrapbooking with you each week. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell beside it so that you'll be the first to be notified when my next video goes live. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator yet, I would love for you to choose me. I'll link to my online stores underneath this video. Now, speaking of video, be sure to watch all the way through for my bonus tips and design ideas. Now, let's get paper crafting. With the Pierced Blooms dies, you can die cut flowers in several sizes, complete with stitching details, which I think is really cool. Plus, you get leaves and centers to go with them. I've used them on making handmade cards, but you can also use them on scrapbook pages and other paper crafts, and that's what I'm going to show you today. I am really sad that this pack of dies is retiring at the end of this month. I've enjoyed using them so much. If you want to see how to use these dies to make a fun fold card, why not watch this video next? Now, I've taken several of these dies out of the pack, and we're going to create some flower elements for this project first. So, I have a piece of balmy blue cardstock, and I'm going to use these two flower elements and the little centers. So I'm going to die cut that out using my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And then I'm going to take this piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock, and I've got this flower image and two leaves that I'm going to die cut out as well. And then I'm going to take this flower center and when I finish die cutting it out of balmy blue, I'll die cut it out of Bermuda Bay as well. Then I'm going to take a scrap piece of basic white cardstock and I've got this little flower. So I'm going to die cut that out. Not done yet, but almost done. And then I have a scrap piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock. Now on the back of it, I've attached some of our adhesive sheets because I want to die cut two of these stems. And when they come out, they're really skinny and very hard to apply glue to the back of them. So if I use the adhesive sheets, it creates a sticker that I can then apply on the project. So I'm going to stop the video I'm going to go ahead and die cut everything out. I'll come back and then we'll put the flowers together and then we'll do something to create this really neat home decor idea. There we go. I have all the bits and pieces cut out and now it's time to adhere them together. So I'm going to use my silicone craft sheet because if I have any spillage, um, it will not mess up my grid sheet or my table or anything like that. So I'm going to layer this basic white flower on top of the balmy blue flower. And then I'm going to add, there we go, a little center from the Bermuda Bay. I'll set that aside. Then I'm gonna bring in this other balmy blue flower. And again, I'm going to put this Bermuda Bay center then I have this Bermuda Bay flower, and I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to add the balmy blue center. It just pulls all the colors together and coordinates the project. Now, I'm not going to use this, I'm going to do anything with the stems, not going to do anything with the stems or the leaves. What I am going to do is I'm going to set these aside to dry, and we're going to get going on the art decor piece and that is using a framed canvas that I picked up at, well, it wasn't even a craft store. It was more of a sort of a knick-knack store. Very inexpensive. It already is covered with gesso. I don't think you really need to have one that's covered, but I love the size, and I'm going to use this canvas and the flowers that I've just created 
to create a beautiful art project. So I brought out a piece of scrap grid sheet that I had hanging around because I want to use it to take a little bit of color off of my blending brush. So the idea is we're going to use our blending brushes and ink pads to apply color directly to the canvas to create a colorful background for the flowers. So I'm going to start off with balmy blue and I'm going to add balmy blue to the top part of my canvas. There we go. I went fairly light to start off with. I'm going to leave my ink pad open in case I decide I want to add some more color in a minute. And then for the bottom part of my canvas, I've decided to use Sahara sand. I want to keep the colors quite light and let the flowers be the standout piece on my canvas. So same thing. I'm going to ink up and then add the color to the bottom. And there we go. I love these two colors together on this canvas and the color applied so easily. It really doesn't take a lot of ink or a lot of effort. So now let's bring in some of these elements that we've created and complete this art decor home piece. Now I know right away that my stems are going to be too long for the canvas. So I have some paper snips ready, so I'm going to trim off the bottom once I get them situated. But I think the, the way to start off this project is to figure out where I want my flowers to be, and then I can add my stems so that um, I have room for my flowers and my flowers aren't kind of hanging over the stem. So I'm happy with where this stem is. So I'll just leave this flower here and I'm going to peel off the backing and I will lay the stem down like so. And then for my second flower, I kind of want them to cross at the bottom. So I'm going to leave my flower in place even though it's not adhered down quite yet and kind of get a, an idea of where I want it to sit. I think like that and then what I'll do is I'll trim off those ends and we'll go ahead and attach the rest of the elements to this project. There we go, I have my stems attached and trimmed off at the bottom. Now, what I did find was my adhesive sheets did not stick very well to this canvas because this canvas is really rough. It was a very inexpensive canvas, maybe that's why. So what I ended up doing was pulling out my gel medium and I uh, brushed a little bit of that on using a foam brush and that helped it stick right away. I am gonna try and use my multi-purpose liquid glue for the rest of this project, but it could be that I need to go back and use my gel medium, but let's see how it works in the, in the meantime. So I'm going to put some liquid glue, the multi-purpose liquid glue on this flower and I'm going to add it here. And then I'm going to take this second flower, put some glue on the back of it, and tuck it there, a little bit underneath. And then my third flower, I'm going to move down a little bit and maybe cover up part of that stem. And then I'm going to finish off by adding my two leaves. And there we go, a super cute home decor art piece that I created with the help of my blending brushes and my pierced blooms dies. If you would like a complete listing of the supplies that I used and the measurements for all of the cardstock bits and pieces, I'll link to my blog post 
in the description box under this video. I've also linked to my online stores so that if you want to pick up the Pierced Blooms dies before they retire at the end of this month so that you can make beautiful projects like this one, you can link over to my online store and purchase them before they are gone for good. I'm Terry. I'm nuts about stamping. I hope you'll try this fun home decor piece someday soon. Bye for now.